A parallel plate waveguide is composed of two conducting plates of the same width, w, separated by a distance, d. The space between the plates is filled with a dielectric having relative permittivity of epsilon r. The analysis uses the assumption that w is much greater than d, so that the majority of the fields may safely be assumed to be contained within the dielectric, with minimal fringing on the left and right sides. A parallel plate waveguide is easy to fabricate, like a microstrip, but it eliminates most of the susceptibility to interference because the fields are mostly internal. Also unlike a microstrip, a parallel plate waveguide supports a true TEM wave. They also offer a relatively high bandwidth of single mode operation. The characteristic impedance Z0 of the dominant mode in a parallel plate waveguide, which is TEM, is given by d over w times the square root of mu over epsilon, or eta. In a parallel plate waveguide, TE and TM modes come in simultaneously, so both TE1 and TM1 begin to propagate at the first higher order mode cutoff frequency, which is equal to c over 2d square root of epsilon r. Since the wave is TEM and entirely contained within the dielectric, the phase velocity is c over the square root of epsilon r. The higher order modes of a parallel plate waveguide are also often used, so it's worth also saying that higher order modes of both TE and TM modes come in at frequencies given by this equation, where n is an integer greater than or equal to 1, which is used to distinguish the various modes. Each of these modes will also have their own characteristic impedance and phase velocity. As an example, Suppose you wanted to find the characteristic impedance of a parallel plate waveguide operating in the TEM mode, given that W was 100 mm, D is 2 mm, and epsilon r is 3. If we plug these values into our equation for the characteristic impedance, we find that the characteristic impedance of the line is 43.5 ohms. Also, the cutoff frequency of the TE1 and TM1 modes is 43.3 GHz. So this parallel plate guide will be single mode at all frequencies below 43.3 GHz. Finally, let's look at the rectangular waveguide. A rectangular waveguide is a rectangular conductive tube of width A and height B filled with the dielectric of relative permittivity epsilon r and relative permeability mu r. In this structure, the fields are entirely contained. As in the case of the coax, there is no possibility at all of interference from external structures or signals. Waveguides are commonly empty, which bypasses the loss of a dielectric and means that they can offer extremely low loss performance. They can also offer a very high single mode bandwidth. However, they are also often quite bulky and inflexible, so when you're using them, space can become an issue. No single conductor transmission line is capable of supporting TEM propagation, so the dominant mode on our rectangular waveguide is the TE10 mode, assuming that the A dimension is larger than the B. Both TE and TM modes have cutoff frequencies given by this equation. Here, M and N are integers used to distinguish the modes. So, for instance, the TE10 mode has M equal to 1 and N equal to 0. To calculate its cutoff frequency, you would plug those m and n values into this equation together with the waveguide dimensions. For the TM mode, both m and n are greater than or equal to 1. For the TE mode, both m and n are greater than or equal to 0, except that they are not both allowed to be 0 simultaneously. So there's a TE10 mode and a TE01 mode, but no TE00 mode. If the A dimension is greater than the B dimension, TE10 will result in the lowest cutoff frequency, and therefore TE10 is the dominant mode. The phase velocity is given by these equations, and is different for each set of M and N values. The characteristic impedance is also different for each mode. 
and is calculated from this equation for the TE modes, where beta mn is equal to omega over the phase velocity, and from this equation for the Tm modes. As an example, if you want to calculate the cutoff frequencies for the TE10, TE01, and TM11 modes in a free space-filled rectangular waveguide where A equals 47.55 mm and B equals 22.15 mm, which is the dimensions for a WR187 waveguide, the dominant TE10 mode cutoff frequency is calculated from this equation, and it turns out to be 3.15 GHz. So this is the lowest frequency that will propagate on the guide at all. The TE01 mode cutoff is calculated from the same equation, except that m equals 0 and n equals 1, and it is 6.77 GHz. Finally, the TM11 mode is calculated from the same equation, where n and m are both equal to 1. This results in a cutoff frequency of 7.47 GHz for the TM11 mode. Note that the TE11 mode will also begin to propagate at this frequency. Also note that if we want to find the bandwidth of single mode operation, we should also check the cutoff frequency for the TE20 mode, which may be lower than that for the TE01 mode. It turns out that in this case, the TE20 mode has a cutoff frequency of 6.3 GHz, which means that the band of single mode operation for this waveguide is from 3.15 GHz to 6.3 gigahertz.